Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Let's start out with this uh, Jeff Berwick video that Jennifer showed me. Very interesting. Uh, we're going to play this and then we'll get into the meat of uh, the markets. But let's start off with this video from Jeff Berwick. We've been saying for years that not only is politics slash government inherently evil, but it is also a complete and total joke. Perhaps after decades and decades of electing the lesser of two evils, people are finally starting to wake up to this charade. There is a noticeable shift as the majority of people are turning away from mainstream politics. This is part and parcel with the mainstream turning away from the mainstream media. Mainstream television programming, and it's called programming for a reason, is in terminal decline. Cable cutting is now a thing. People are finally just turning off the propaganda. And as that happens, we are witnessing absolute hilarity in the status quo of politics. The politicians themselves reflect the diminishment. The internet has beamed a bright light on the US political system and revealed the squalor. Hillary, for instance, should be under indictment, but reports circulating widely on the internet indicate that if indicted, she will release the 900 FBI files on prominent DC politicians and others that she purloined while first lady. Yes, you heard that right. The U.S.'s most prominent politician is likely to be brought up on charges, but in order to avoid them is blackmailing most every important leader in Washington. Her husband, Bill Clinton, is on the campaign trail with her, but is being pursued by several of the women he apparently raped, and thus is not helping much. It doesn't really matter though, because almost literally, absolutely no one is showing up to even hear what she has to say. In Texas recently, admittedly not a Democrat stronghold, six people showed up to welcome Killary. Often she is speaking in front of absolutely tiny crowds counted in the dozens, not even hundreds. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Bush-Clinton 2016 ticket, Jeb has been treated like a nobody. He's moped and brooded his way through his campaign and recently had to ask his 30-strong audience to applaud on cue. I think the next president needs to be a lot quieter, but send a signal that we're prepared to act in the national security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. Even more recently, Jeb was speaking at a Rotary Club meeting when the organizers asked him to stop. They weren't kidding either. He didn't get five minutes or even one more minute. They started the music mid-sentence and basically ran him off stage. I can promise you the best way to show respect outside of rebuilding our military to two men and women uniform is to fix that mess as fast as I can. That's it. Thank you. They're kicking me out the door. They're kicking me out the door. And that's when Jeb isn't out in the early dusk hours on back street Dunkin' Donut drive throughs harassing people to care about him. There are two candidates, however, who have seemed to catch the attention of the public, fascist Donald Trump and communist Bernie Sanders. But even with this, it shows a serious change. Neither Trump nor Bernie are promotions of the mainstream media, yet they are getting attention, in some cases a lot. The reason being, in our estimation, is that people are grasping for something, anything new. They are tired of the old system and know that no matter who they choose, they're going to lose. Sadly, however, instead of grasping for something totally radical in the land of the free, like a candidate that at least thinks freedom and liberty are somewhat important, like Rand Paul, or even more so Ron Paul before him, they're looking to an ultra-fascist or an ultra-communist in their final flailing attempts to try something different. If they get their wish, it will either mean World War III as Trump begins bombing what's left of the planet yet unbombed by the US empire, or bread lines if communist Bernie Sanders decides to take top-down control of the economy. In the end though, the US is over. This ship is going down no matter which puppet is selected to speak in front of the cameras. The biggest reason to doubt the intelligence and wisdom of any presidential candidate is that they actually want the job. How many people were clamoring to be the captain of the Titanic after it was already turned near right side up? We're not waiting around to see how it all turns out. We're already preparing for it and profiting from this ongoing train wreck, including at our upcoming TDV Internationalization and Investment Summit on February 18th in Acapulco, Mexico. 
and then we'll be planning for how we can rebuild the world once this archaic big government and central banking edifice collapses. So that's Jeff Berwick on his self-promotion thing. We're not going to cover the rest of that. Now, I disagree a little bit about Donald Trump because Trump is saying some things that are not a typical fascist type of thing. Trump is talking about warming up to Russia. He's talking about shutting down military bases. Uh, he's talking about he's talking about some things that are a little bit different. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe Trump is in a different faction than the fascist. I would say the closest thing to the fascist would be the 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 club of the neocons, and and that's probably going to be um, Bush. So I don't know if he's right on that, but it's a very interesting take. Now, of course, Sanders is obviously a ridiculous communist. And uh, he just promises everything to everyone, none of which he can pay for. So that's completely absurd. But uh, there's something definitely coming. And the, the fact that, uh, the, that Trump and Sanders are leading. Now, we've seen in the past that uh, they can switch these things very, very quickly. Uh, if you remember... Uh, the last election, the last two elections, we had uh, people like um, um, some of the moderate Republican candidates. I'm trying to think of the name of the guy. He's not even running this time. But uh, there were some just uh, unheard of candidates coming in early and, and showing well and then were completely uh, taken out of the thing. Um, so that very well could happen. Uh, this time, certainly just going through these first two doesn't really tell us much. Now, if Trump holds a lead all the way through um, the next bunch of them, then yeah, uh, that could be a legitimate thing. Uh, so Jeff may be right on that. Now, let's get over to the gold chart. We actually have, let's, let's jump into the five minute because we actually have kind of a after hours rally going on here and as I said when I was doing my last video looking at the one at the daily gold graph uh, most of the time when you see these daily spikes you can see on the daily that we had that record that was the the largest daily volume in history it lines up right there with that day that uh, most of the time, that's a top. But there's that very small percentage of the time when it's not. And you can see with this late rally that we have in gold that it's actually not, that it's going higher from here. And you can see where we are right now, that we had this big after hour spike all the way up to about 12.15, and then it fell back, and now it's rallying again. Now, uh, we're not seeing the same sort of thing in silver, but we know that silver lags. Uh, silver is starting to catch up. If we pull out the daily, uh, we're going to expect to see silver volume start to catch up. We'll see what the silver volume is uh, once today's volume is reported. Now, I wanted to look at these other currencies and how the... Uh, gold price is doing in the other currencies because what's happening now is well I'll, I'll, I'll clear off the charts here and, and take you to the Japanese yen and you can see that uh, we have a, a big change in trend here uh, you can see that the Japanese yen is now strengthening significantly against the dollar this was a trend that I picked when I did uh, a cross on the yen with the South African Rand, uh, figuring that it was probably going to be a win-win because at this point I figured that the yen had to strengthen. Now it seems that it's strengthening really rapidly and that means that the dollar is falling. So we can look at things like gold in other currencies. Now one of the favorite charts to look at was gold in the Japanese yen and that was because uh, the Japanese yen was so weak and gold was starting to strengthen and you can see here when we look at that chart going out to the weekly 
it's still relatively strong because the price increase in gold is, is making up for the difference in the yen. But the yen is really one of the few currencies that's actually strong. So if we start to look at some of these other gold charts, if we look at gold in the Australian dollar, you can see here, this is a big move now. Um, we're talking about just a very small percentage away from all-time highs in the price of gold in Australian dollars. Uh, another one, Canadian dollars. Uh, you can see here, look at the strength that's coming in here. The US dollar is weakening, the, the price of gold is strengthening, and uh, gold is challenging, is, is looking at challenging new highs. Now we know that with the price of oil, uh, I just saw today $1.29 a gallon gasoline prices. So we've covered it before, Canada is in big trouble. Here's gold in the Swiss franc. And you can see that is not uh, the most bullish of charts. It, it took a big hit, it, but it is moving up. Uh, that's going to be the same thing as gold in the euro, so I'm not going to show you that because they pegged. But uh, gold in the Great British Pound, you can see that's, that's a significant rally there. Uh, we're not uh, that far from... Uh, the old highs. We're certainly much farther than we are in currencies like the Australian dollar and the Canadian dollar. So as I point out before in other videos, we're starting to get closer and closer to the the main currency, the petrodollar. Uh, we're getting at the periphery. We're looking at the colonial empires here, the, the Canadian uh, price, the Australian price. These are the Western English-based empires, and now we're starting to see this gold price creep into those. And we know, uh, we believe that the last man standing is going to be the U.S. dollar, and we're going to see an explosion of the gold price in the U.S. dollar. So let's spend the rest of the time here uh, looking at this lunar series. Now, We've been watching the monkey very, very closely. And the issue with the monkey is how many are minted. We had Atmex run out on the half ounce. And uh, we have about 2,000 left at Gainesville. I think it actually went below that. So I'm watching that very carefully. I, I'm going to take a few hundred of those probably at some point. But uh, I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I, I know some members have. Now, we had a confirmation that... Atmex has stated that they're uh, reaching out to the Perth Mint to get more half ounce monkeys, which means that they're actually going to request that they mint more of them. And that's kind of a confirmation of my belief that they really only mint those coins to demand. And that's very, very important. Because you can see here with the sold out figures, the sold out goes way, way back in the Lunar Series here. Well, 2012, there's another uh, PDF for the previous ones. But basically every year, the one ounce sells out at 300,000. Now, starting with the Dragon in 2012, we, we couldn't really get the one ounce. They kind of pre-sold out and they were released at 99 bucks. It came down in, in the next few years, but Still, that was when we started moving to the half ounce coins. Now, the snake was very low uh, half ounce issue. You can see half of the 300,000 that the one ounce did. And then you can see the next year with the horse, it was a fairly popular series, but it still didn't reach the number. Now, we don't have those numbers on those goats. and. Uh, we don't have, obviously, because the monkey is still being sold, we don't have the number on the monkey. My prediction, my guess is going to be that the number on the goat is going to be low, a lot lower than this horse. And that the number on the monkey is going to be super low, much lower than even uh, anything we've seen, probably all the way back 
um, to even before 2010, uh, somewhere back towards the mouse. So we're watching those monkeys very closely on the half ounce. I don't believe that too many of them are being minted. One of the reasons why is because I think the demand is very weak coming from silver stackers. I think stackers are in trouble just the same way that everybody else is in trouble. We have anecdotal stories coming in through the various uh, websites. Donald Trump actually is starting to hint at things. If you, if you go to some of the alternative news sites, you'll find the stories about Trump hinting at a near 30% unemployment rate and the fact that government is lying. So we've got that. We've got uh, people reporting anecdotal stories about how weak the economy is. So it's, it's very possible that the stacking of that half ounce goat and that half ounce monkey have been very, very weak. Now you combine that with the fact that I believe it's in the interest of the Perth Mint and any of the mints actually, but the Perth Mint especially, to not release silver, to, to release as little silver as possible at these ridiculously low prices. And when we combine those two things, I think we may actually be looking at one of the best performing half ounce coins, uh, this half ounce monkey. We're going to be watching it very closely and we'll talk to you next time.